Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Off the Wall. I'm Mike. Hey, everybody. I'm Bucks. And uh, we have reached episode 12, the season one finale of two seasons for Andor, the Star Wars series on Disney+. Plus. Um, it's been a bit of a rocky road here in kind of the latter half of season one. Some of the episodes have been a little bit better than others. Um, we were curious last time, how are they going to how are they going to end season one? Is it going to be a tie up the story or because we know we're getting a season two, is it just going to kind of be a lead in for what's coming next? I think we got a pretty good answer for that as well as maybe a hint as to where season two is going. Um, overall Boggs, what did you think of, of the final up the season finale for, uh, and or season finale? Yeah, it was fine. I mean, this episode and the whole season is definitely a bit of, whatever for me mm -hmm. uh excellently made you know production value set design in particular cinematography acting sometimes is really good um you know as i said costumes and things like that but overall story-wise big frustrations there big issues pacing issues as well editing is is a little strange i'm not gonna lie um music as well bothers me um but like I said, some good, some good moments. Some uh, I like some of the CG uh -huh. in this episode. You know, like the ships taking off and the yeah. post-credit scene. Um, but overall, you know, wasn't. Uh, am I going to rush back to watch this episode or series? No, uh, I'll probably never watch it again, to be honest. But um, I, I was not. I was not bored or anything like that because I'm interested in this pop, in this specific timeline and you know some of the characters and the political um story elements but overall yeah disappointed uh, i was expecting a big climax didn't really get it um and yeah it, like i said just a bit of meh yeah i i think i think i had a i enjoyed the season more than you did for the most part but like you i'm still kind of like you know i think i liked this more than book of boba fett Mm -hmm. but certainly not up to the caliber of like the Mandalorian seasons one and two. Mm -hmm. um, this, this is, this is, this is kind of sitting in about the same place as Obi-Wan for me, where it's like, for the most part, I had a good time. I, I have my hangups with it. It's kind of similar to you. I thought the pacing was a little all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. When I look at where we end up, and again, I know we're going into a season two, but when I look at like what the story of season one is, I still don't, don't fully know what the story is like what was what were we building towards with this season even though it's a, a, even though there's another season coming there's usually some kind of story for season one mm -hmm. like season one of the mandalorian we know is all about him figuring out how he wants to proceed with having the child versus being a uh, you know observing the bounty hunters code season two is about trying to help grogu get to the jedi and figuring where he wants to go from there even book of boba fett and Obi-Wan have a clear beginning and end of their story. This one just kind of felt like a series of episodes that didn't seem to have much of a direction or they're just building towards the end of season two, which is fine, I guess, but I still kind of want my one season to have some kind of cohesiveness to it. And I don't think I got that. Yeah, you made loads of good points there. Uh, too many episodes for me um yeah. long drawn out episodes um where some of the story arcs were just so dull um and not a satisfying conclusion in the end yes to be honest i'm already looking forward to season two and expecting it to be better than season one like uh i can just imagine how this season ended mm. I, I i am definitely looking forward more to season two um in terms of where to put it I and mean, this is kind of a overall season review but yeah uh, i did not like book of Boba Fett at all except okay. for the mandalorian episodes which were like nearly 10 out of 10s right mm -hmm. them two episodes so that that does obviously drive the the average ranking up obi-wan was really 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 poor um apart from the last episode was okay but overall i, I didn't like them two episodes um overall I wouldn't say I didn't like Andor, but it was, like I said, really well made, but the story for me was too slow and dull. Having said that, 
I probably would watch Booker Boba Fett and Obi Wan over Andor, um, wow. just for the yeah, just for the entertainment, for the fun uh, of it. Um, just yeah, I just find it more um, watchable. Really, sorry, go ahead. I say those shows have more what you're looking for with Star Wars. It's big action. It's the you know Obi Wan. There's a lot of the Jedi stuff. There's there's a lot more. It's a lot more spectacle to it. I think, which I think is more more your speed. Yeah, there's that. Um, also, you know, again, I mean, it's funny. I, I'm I now about to defend them. And I don't actually like them shows, so um, it's a bit weird. But yeah, I mean, definitely them things. But it's not just that. Star Wars is so much deeper than that. Mm. Um, and even this episode, it it doesn't feel like star wars for me bar a few stormtroopers popping in or you know um the odd planet mention or you know that kind of thing it's it's really not you know the end of the day the show creator uh tony Gilroy, is not he's an admittedly not a star wars fan so and i think that comes across in the show and for me it's not it doesn't hit them identification points what we all know and love about star wars yes obviously my favorite thing in star wars is the force um jedi seed lightsabers i do love all that but even small things like um just blasters and um and just the the character rocks and the music is just not there for me um you know uh, again i've said this like every episode as opposed to tells the jedi that came out during this season which i got emotional at of how good it was again that's not i you know i'm not mentioning oh my god the action scenes or the lightsabers in it or the story and uh, the continuation of the characters we already know and the world that they they're building so because the production is really fantastic in this it is but it still doesn't feel like star wars it doesn't feel like watching a new hope like you're in a lived in world like everything's so polished and and nice and um and a uh, big production value you can see that but it doesn't have the grittiness the um just the just the small details that other shows have so i have big plot points so i i can argue this on a, a micro or macro level so um yeah, yeah it's um I'm, I'm a bit imbalanced where i am uh like i said wasn't um uh, was never how can i put it um i, I never felt like stop watching or anything like i'd stop watching or um i i did somewhat enjoy myself for the most part but overall um i think i prefer them other shows i'm not gonna like even though i'm not gonna watch them back to be honest um, <laughs> but uh, i i still rank them higher than andor just for me i'm never gonna watch this series again i just won't i just didn't find it fun enough or entertaining enough um so yeah it, it's really really and i am look kind of looking forward to season two just to see where the story goes and yeah because now that the rebellion is established to, to somewhat you know the beginnings of um to see where that goes and, and flourishes and with the political things um the potential is you know it, and, and to bring in potentially other characters and things like that that potential is again it's still exciting i'm still there but like hanging on by my fingertips almost so um yeah i struggled with this series uh to be honest since you mentioned it a little bit let's let's get into a little bit you know we, we had this post credit scene showing us what the guys in the prisons were making and it was parts for the death star which is mm. about completed and we know that season two is going to end right up where rogue one starts which is about them getting the details about the death star so mm -hmm. I wonder if season two, what it's got me thinking is it's going to be the the rumors of the Death Star starting to circulate. Because by the time Rogue One happens, they know it's out there. They just don't know what it does or how it works or how to beat it. So mm -hmm. will we see like Galen Erso? Will we see some of these other characters? Or will we see um, Riz Ahmed come back? Will we see, you know, uh, um, Mads Mikkelsen's character whose name I just said and completely forgot, Galen Erso, yes. sending Riz Ahmed, sending Brody to, like, find uh, Jin or um, uh, Saw Gerrera. You know, it, it almost feels like they wouldn't show us that if it wasn't going somewhere. I don't know. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the, like, as I said, there's so much potential of the show that there is. I mean, the timeline, the characters, um, 
like you're saying, um, Galen Erso, of course, awesome Krennic, you know, um, yeah. Tarkin, you know, obviously that the longer, longer shots are of course Vader mm-hmm. and, uh, the emperor of, you know, uh, potentially anyway, um, especially in the emperor via the senate stuff you know via mm. the political element as well so the kind of two fronts you know with the kind of uh, empire side of things imperial you know uh, the way they're kind of stretching across the galaxy and the specifically the senate stuff so uh, there's different fronts here where we can introduce other characters and and other ones from the rebellion as well so yes there is definitely excitement there um of where it can go um, 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 kind of how, like the the sprinklings of Rogue One and kind of a New Hope and and, and all that. So, um, yeah, there there is potential. Like I said, I'm not writing off season two. Um, yeah. So, um, I, I'm I'm very quietly optimistic. Um, yeah. so yeah, it's a it's a difficult one to predict because it was hard to predict this season. Even this finale, I I, I had no clue where it yeah. was going. And, you know, um, I, I did have several pacing issues with this episode. Um, but, yeah, overall, it, you know, it wasn't a bad episode. I mean, there's definitely been worse episodes this season, I'll be honest. But, um, yeah, where it left, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it's hard to uh, have any theories, to be honest, for, for next season. The main thing, I think the main thing that I enjoyed the most about this season, I think, is a lot of the things you mentioned as well. The the production value is very high. I think when it came to, like, writing dialogue, they Mm -hmm. were on, it was, the writing the story was a little rough here and there, but, like, the great monologues from, like, Stellan Skarsgård or the one we had from the the guy who died uh, at the raid um, early on in the season uh, that, uh, Cassian was listening to there was there was great great moments of dialogue there was great character development from from a lot of these characters we're seeing Cassian becoming this kind of hardened rebel that that we know remember from Rogue One and we're seeing where now he's he's committing himself to it he's like kill me or let or let me in um he's like if either either I'm all in on this or just I don't want to live where I'm not fighting and especially after this amazing self eulogy from uh, Fiona Shaw uh projected on the hologram um but like you I, I also agree I think it was just too long of a season um I think 12 episodes was ambitious um I think they probably could have scaled that back to eight maybe nine um because there was a because like the stuff with Mon Mothma ultimately didn't get super all that resolved by the end of this season everything with Cyril is still up in the air uh that that didn't pan out at all the way i thought it was going to which doesn't automatically make it bad but i'm just not satisfied with where we got with his story um so yeah it's kind of where i'm sitting with it i liked it but i didn't love it yeah there's a number of issues in this episode alone that if you think too hard you you probably better not because (laughs) you don't have a a satisfaction like cyril was almost creepy when he saved her you know mirror uh you know even the last time was when, yeah and like are they gonna kiss are they not like what i guess i should say thank her? you okay yeah. <laughs> or just say thank you then yeah if you do, you, like what do you mean you know you don't have to like i was it was almost game of thrones like like you know one of them uh, yeah people trying to help um you know royalty or something so yeah yeah um i don't know where's cassian's sister like wh- where's that whole storyline on uh, you know, <laughs> I think I tried to like, put that out of my mind because his, the show certainly did. <laughs> his mother literally said, you know, don't worry about her. You need to forget about her and move on or something. I'm paraphrasing. And he literally did. Like, he's not mentioned her since. Yeah. I, I have seen a couple of Twitter rumors that it is um, Mira, you know, the, the obviously the Imperial who Cyril saved. And there's a reason why she wanted to take him in alive. But uh, that's a bit of a stretch, I know. Uh, um, yeah yeah there's uh yeah what is what's happened to Cyril? like uh for being so interesting to being a creep almost yeah um yeah and and bix i mean the last five episodes or so i mean she has one or two lines in episodes she, she was tortured through i had a couple of you know she got saved at the end a couple of mumbles here and there or about cassian and 
and that's it that's her done um yeah uh like i said several issues about this uh, hardly any stellar scars guard this episode um you know yeah i was kind of because i think he's been my most consistent thing i've liked yeah, yeah throughout the whole thing i think he has been stellar um and i was kind of hoping a bit because he was like he shows up like they're gonna kill cassian and even after watching the show i'm like i'm still not 100 percent sure why we're killing him but mm -hmm. okay i mean i kind of get it but they're worried he's gonna flip on him but when it came to what the whole fight, the big you know riot that happens in the city in Ferrix at this point, and he's just kind of like, oh wow, that's different. All right, I'm gonna leave. Just just leaves. Yeah. And I was like, no, go shoot a pistol or something, dude. Like, I, there's a, yeah. lot of, a lot of for that speech he gave about what he's sacrificing everything. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, it's true. Watch. I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing, and. <laughs> Even the fact the Imperials took so long to draw a blaster, it, I was almost pulling my hair out. Like they could have done that immediately, as soon as they started to fight, as soon as the you know um, the Ferrix kind of uh, civilians started to fight back, they waited so long to draw their blasters. And you know we're, we're showing how evil and dark the Empire could be. I mean, there was a perfect opportunity to you know to to you know kind of completely wipe out that community and they just let them beat on them until they eventually draw their blasters i was just thinking this is yeah um again it, it, got, it just longed it out um yeah. yes go ahead i was gonna say i kind of got where that was coming from like they were trying to it was almost that idea of like let's let's save some face let's let them make the first move so it looks like we're defending ourselves mm -hmm. but i think that could have been conveyed a bit if, that, if that's what they were going for it wasn't well conveyed that was the interpretation i took from it mm. um but i totally get where you're coming from it's like yeah it was it just the, the riot itself just kind of felt like it just sort of like it, there was nothing and then suddenly it was just very quick and I, I know situations like that can get out of hand real quick but like you blink and you'll miss how it starts and then you're not really sure who started it yeah and I did get the kind of references, you know, having a revolution, you know, straight out of Lamez, it looked like, you know, with the oh, the, yeah. people, the people marching against the uh, against the police force, if you will, mm. or, or the empire or, you know, a regime. Um, so I got that. And yeah, I, I just found it a little cheesy with the whole okay. uh, Maeve thing, you know, doing that ho giant hologram Snoke style. And then everyone kind of just looking right. up and, and listening. Yeah, cause, cause we, we knew she was going to kind of and her, her story is going to end with some kind of spark in the rebellion. She, you know, she mentioned it herself as a character. So we knew that was coming somehow. And, you know, with Cassian's uh, adopted father, Clem, and how he died. So we knew it was coming that way. Uh, the fact that Cassian wasn't even hardly involved in any of that. He was kind of saving Bix. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, he did, he did, uh, you know, did shoot um, a couple of times. I tell a lie. But Wait, blank. over... <laughs> Shot that dude yeah. right in the chest. <laughs> he's done it a few times. Yeah, he's done it a few yeah. times. Um, it becomes a signature and, move by the time Rogue yeah, One gets there. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and I just felt like the that was the only action in this episode. I mean, it was kind of a little bit of a street brawl, a street yeah. brawl. Sorry. Yeah. And that was it. You know, my probably my favorite scene or shot in this episode was the post credit scene. Um, Good. you know the Death Star being built it looked great you know CG was great and a couple of shots of, of ships or aircrafts taking off mm -hmm. it did it did look really good like CG wise um and yeah I mentioned the pacing and I don't know why like it seemed like the second half of, of the season they'd have scenes for maybe 30 seconds sometimes little to no dialogue mm -hmm. and the music would start off like slow ominous music and it would get so it would swell for 30 you know not a few seconds and then it cut to another scene again exactly the same like start off slow dialogue heavy or sometimes uh you know two people discussing it'd swell and then it'd cut again and it'd do the same thing i'm like what it, like it jumped from mm -hmm. character to character it just felt like a uh, it was like an uncomfortable watch it wasn't um yeah uh it was like update this character update this character update this character we'll swell the music here here yeah I just felt it was too, um, you know, pain by numbers, too, mm -hmm. too almost too structured. Again, doesn't for for a regular sci science fiction kind of show. Okay, sure, but mm -hmm. 
but not for Star Wars. Like I just didn't um, get the beats. I didn't get the uh, emotion of it. Um, you know, it's um, yeah, it was it was just a void of a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of this, the fine tuning attention to detail was just not there for me. Um, yeah, like like we said, several confusing things in this episode. Yeah. Um, you know, and and just ended with him kind of handing over a blaster or showing him a blaster like yeah i know another weird ending um so yeah too long too many episodes you know most of the the episode endings are, are really strange as well so um yeah they end in weird points i've yeah. noticed yeah for me that that's just a reflection of it, of it not needing to be that many episodes like mm. you know you could have shortened it down and that kind of stuff so yeah uh not not my favorite series i'm not gonna lie um many uh confusing things um but yeah i mean that in season two i mean we can look forward to you know cassian's involvement in the rebellion officially mm. um i guess he, he brings bix with her i mean what's cyril gonna do now will he be in the empire um obviously we've got uh Stanley Skarsgård's character is he gonna like I have a feeling he will move Cassian somehow towards Saw Gerrera mm -hmm. potentially um uh, Mothma seems to be I, I, I love that costume but their costumes by the way of how uh, -huh. uh you know the daughter and the son were kind of matched so up I'm just, I was like wow yeah, yeah and, and uh, it's obviously a purposeful thing there. like the whole season is about I was just about to say that yeah <laughs> there's like an angelic look about her almost even compared to all the other um you know political figures that she's with mm. like she looks the best like she looks the most almost regal almost honorable than amongst her peers so obviously that's a that's a clear intention and i got that um no issue with that i mean um, you know she, she looked fantastic so mm. um yeah I, I did like the little scene in her with her driver who kind of you know we need some privacy and he doesn't really um yeah there's a bit of tension there and then obviously related back to the empire meaning that you know she's being watched as well by mirrors number two so yeah um some positives to take out of this episode but as a first season finale no it, it just wasn't yeah. there for me and it's a reflection like a, of the series really it's like a good episode but not a good finale like as a as an episode of television i think it worked but when you consider the fact that it's supposed to be the finale of the entire season Mm. it just was a little disappointing because yeah. overall like and again i think this goes back to the issue of too long of a season if we had had like eight episodes because we've spent two three episodes with with marva dead two yeah mm. we've spent so much time building towards her death she was in the show less and less and then she's gone so i i didn't feel quite the the weight or the loss of her because it was so long building to it that it kind of it was almost like i did my morning before i had to so i feel like in a shorter season i would have had less time to get over her dying and it would have felt a bit more impactful because we would have spent more time with her because there's like one or two episodes where we just don't see her at all hmm. and it kind of same with like the, the sister thing it's like i forgot about the sister thing because we never brought it up again. Same with Bix. We we saw her so little in the last few episodes when he saved her. I was just kind of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess he doesn't need to go save her. Eh, all right, cool. I mean, I could go on, Mike. Uh, yeah. Where's, where's um, Cyril's uncle that they mentioned yeah. several times? Um, A lot. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and the sister thing was an integral part of like the first three episodes, and then she was mentioned a few times after, yeah. until kind of you know Cassie's mother, you know, maybe kind of shut that down, and then it shut it down for us too. You know, we're supposed to just drop it and forget it, and um, yeah, I mean, there, there, there's so many different plot holes almost, mm -hmm. um, and things that are just left for season two. You know, when we're gonna get that, we don't know. Um, as far as I'm aware, at the point of this recording, they have started filming season two. Um, so will it come out next year? The year after that, obviously we have um, Bad Batch season two dropping in January. That's the next thing, and obviously we've got Mando. I'm not 100 sure on the release date yet. Mando season three. So there are a number of things to come out. Um, not sure when we'll get that. So to end on this episode, when we've got such a long time to wait for season two, 
Um, yeah, there's uh, a. Yeah. They, they are they're the filming right now in London, so. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can go. You can go check it out. <laughs> yeah, potentially Pine with Studios probably. I believe yeah. Alan Tudyk it has been named in season two, I, I, if I remember correctly. So I believe KTSO will be in season two. They had said before uh, this show even like came out that he was there for stuff. We mm-hmm. assumed it was going to be this season, but it almost mm-hmm. sounds to me like they started filming season two immediately, like back to back with season one. If they're already filming, so. I mean, when, when they announced this at Solar Celebration, if I if I remember correctly, Andy Tudyk was on stage, um, but they did also so. announce later that the cast list, you know, and the cast of season one, um, not soon after Star Wars Celebration, and he wasn't in it. So I think there was a, an establishment of, oh, okay, he's not in season one. This is Cassian's journey before he meets kind of K two S O, and you know, before his full involvement with the rebellion. So. Yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. But I, I, yeah, I believe K2SO will be in season two. So I hope so. Um, there's that potential as well. Yeah, I really do hope so. Because I think a lot of people, because he was one of the best parts of Rogue One, I think. Mm. I think it seemed like they had an established relationship by the time Rogue, like he wasn't just assigned yeah. to him at that point. So, mm-hmm. so it'll be cool to see him and um, also maybe see uh, Cassian's uh, U Wing ship because that those ships are so cool. I like that ship they had in Rogue One. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, and um, I, I'd I'd like to see Cassian's journey, uh, how he actually joins the rebellion full on, uh, because he's in that room with Mom Mothma as she's talking to Genesso, and how he, you know, has become such a uh, you know prominent and established figure. I thought we we're kind of going to get that some, you know, at least some of that in season one. He isn't really; he's almost totally outside of that. Um, yeah. And then what happens by, by his mother? There's, you know, we're assuming he he joins in from there. But um, yeah, it's e- even that, you know, um, unfortunately, it's Cassie's story has just not been compelling enough for me. Um, He's almost and, been a supporting character in yeah, this series. Definitely. I think if they had named this show like Rise of the Rebellion or something, I think we may have talked about this before. I think it mm-hmm. would have set a different expectation for me. Because calling it Andor, I'm thinking, especially over the first three episodes, I'm thinking, mm-hmm. oh, it's, it's all about this guy. The last, like, six episodes haven't really focused on him a whole lot, outside of the prison episode, but a mm-hmm. whole lot hasn't been focused on him. It's been focused on Mon Mothma and, and Stellan Skarsgård. And, 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 and you know. yeah. Admittedly, you know, probably my favorite parts of the last, I don't know, four episodes have probably been the prison stuff. Uh, where's Andy Circus as well? Is he like what happened to him? Yeah, and he's still uh, there, <laughs> yeah, and he still can't swim, is he just hanging on somewhere? Or, yeah, what like even I keep thinking about cereal, like what was the relevance of him eating that cereal? Like, why are we getting close ups of that cereal bowl? Like, what was that supposed to be like a clever reference? I was assuming it was, and that kind of you know, them conversations would come back and it's kind of alien like mother almost like is that gonna come back to and there was overall lack of aliens i felt in this uh, and it's a weird thing to say but obviously in the star wars universe yeah there was a couple with humans. obviously cassian when he escapes from prison when he got on the ship but one or two here and then there's another interaction where cassian had that uh, with that bigger mm. character on um on Ferris, but other than that, yeah, I mean, I don't really remember too many. Uh, that's what I mean. That whole Star Wars scene. Th- these are just small things, Mike. That you know, um, with the like, for example, the Mandalorian. I mean, you have main supporting characters who are aliens or alien beings that come in. You know, Nick Nolte's character, the Ugnor, for example, mm-hmm. just that whole episodes are centered around. Um, it- it's just not there here. It's just not here. In, the, yeah. in this series and uh, they're the things that get me over to um you, you know loving a show or, or, or me embracing it as a star wars fan it just doesn't meet the story criteria um but so it's not just fancy lightsabers and you know and, and you know the force theme and things like that it is the the integral things that make star wars star wars and i felt like it was almost completely devoid in this series yeah it was well made but just not there wasn't enough heart for me uh, there wasn't enough star wars 
Star Wars in this series. I get it. And like I said, I, I, I had my ups and downs. I think I liked it more than you did, but I definitely, it, it, I don't, I just don't think it met my expectations. And maybe that's, that's more mm-hmm. of a me thing. Again, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I haven't gone back and rewatched any of the shows actually, but that's, that's just more of a, there's so many other things to watch. Finding the time to go back and rewatch right, right. Shows is tough. Um, this is one of those ones kind of like with Boba Fett or, or Obi-Wan. We're like, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go back and watch specific scenes on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as the show as a whole, I feel like I'm almost going to need to see what season two has in store before I can, because of, because season one is such a, like, it's not really a finale. It's just building for season two. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I'm going to need to see season two. It's like when you get the second movie in a trilogy and it's just, mm-hmm. build, it's just building for the final movie. That's kind of mm-hmm. how I feel right now was like, I'm going to need to see season two before I have a final decision on the show. I've liked it. I haven't loved it. And I, but I do want to see more because I think there's interesting ideas. We're playing in a neat sandbox. Mm-hmm. I just, I need some more though. Yeah, same thing. Uh, again, I totally agree. Interesting sandbox for sure. Uh, great, my, almost maybe my favorite time period in Star Wars. You know, so much to tell there. Um, with so many other characters to bring in uh, and stories and, and worlds to go and, uh, you know, plots plot points to, to touch on. But I would also say that, you know, the, these are kind of my opinions, what I think about the show, you know, whether you like it or not, that's great. I mean, you, you know, I think here off the wall, we accept and embrace all Star Wars fans, you know, whether, you know, uh, all your kind of opinions are respected. So put it in the comments if you yeah, do like the show or not, if you think I'm wrong or you think Mike's right or you think we're both idiots or whatever. We that's missed all good. something. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. But no, uh, I'm all good, really. If you like it, honestly, I feel so happy for you. I, I get that love and excitement and passion from other things in Star Wars. This, you know, I'm not gonna lie, the last few series have really put a, a bad taste in my mouth, whether it's Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan, you know, some of my, they're two, some of my favorite characters in Star Wars, and now Cassian series, but we did get Tales of Jedi in between, thank God. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And I'm season looking, three's coming. Yeah, and Bad Batch as well, Bad Batch yeah. season two, I'm definitely looking forward to that. and. You know, um, we love Star Wars. Um, you know, I always will do. So uh, I didn't love this series. I haven't loved the last few. Uh, don't get me started on the sequels as well. So I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of them. But uh, yeah, I mean, where, if you guys do that, that's, that's great. I'm happy for you guys because you guys are Star Wars fans. So um, no, there's no um, issue uh, if you don't like or if you absolutely love and think it's the best thing ever to come out of Star Wars. Of course, I don't agree. But if you if you do that, that's great. I'm happy for you. Yeah, because at the end of the day, guys, like uh, like we've seen certain certain big name filmmakers are in the, are in in the press right now for for saying certain things about certain franchises. To, and and I'll repeat what I said on Twitter, which is like I don't have a problem with somebody disliking something I like. I have a problem mm-hmm. when those people try to tell me I shouldn't like it. Uh, right? Yeah, so, no one should do that. And, and it happens then, a lot. It's, it's just a common thing to do nowadays. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, but you're absolutely correct. No one should tell you that. Um, you're entitled to, to, you know, to your opinion, what you you like or don't. Like. What's wrong with that? It's it's an opinion. Mm-hmm. So what? So, so we so we that's why like we said earlier, we want to hear what you guys think. So let us know down in the comments. How off base were we? How 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 much do your opinions like? Let us know. Maybe there was something we didn't see that you did, and we can look at it and say, hey, you know what? dude might be on to something but let us know down below let us know on twitter make sure you guys like subscribe hit the notification bell all that good stuff and we'll see you guys again here next time with another show something coming up here soon i don't know we'll see something's something's got to be coming out soon there's stuff everywhere netflix anyway um but yeah we'll see you guys again next time on off the wall (laughs) 